This thief broke into a car, but turns out it was a trap. Alright folks, buckle up, no pun intended, because we've got a wild ride to share, and it's set in none other than our bustling Buenos Aires. Meet Ciro, by day, unknown, by night, a man with a mission, a thief of stereos, and apparently a lover of Ray-Bans. One day our man Ciro is out doing his thing when he sees this shiny 4x4 just asking to be borrowed without permission. He taps it, no alarm, then like some modern MacGyver, uses a tennis ball to unlock the door. This guy's got a PhD in petty theft, from the University of Dodgy Street. He gets in, lifts the stereo without a scratch. Professional, eh? But our man isn't done yet. He's feeling a bit territorial and decides to mark his territory, peeing on the back seats. I mean, who needs a fire hydrant when you have a 4x4, right? Then he's ready to leave, except one little problem. The doors won't open. Seward tries all four, because, you know, they might be playing some sort of weird door lottery. Nope, still nada. He even attempts to bust the windows. Still nothing. This 4x4 is turning out to be more of a 0x0, zero zero, and our boy Ciro is not enjoying the plot twist. Pulling on his decades of chop shop wisdom, he tries dismantling the door only to earn himself a gruesome hand injury. He takes a shot at the windshield with his gun, only to win a booby prize of a bullet in his thigh. I bet he's thinking, how's that for karma? You get it, karma? <laughs> now there's a turnoff, an indoor pool in the car, but filled with your own blood. Realizing he's more stuck than an elephant in a smart car, Seward tries waving down a makeup caked pedestrian who's using the car window as a mirror. Unfortunately, she's more interested in her lipstick than his life and leaves him shouting at his reflection. After a failed call to his wife, Sewer resorts to finishing off his Pepsi, and her dude gets the award for worst time to run out of Pepsi ever. The night comes. Pain is Sewer's only companion. He wakes up thirsty, and in desperation starts licking the condensation off the windows. Talk about window shopping. In the midst of all this, he plugs in the stolen stereo, and wouldn't you know it, his favorite song comes on, a steamy anthem about car love, because irony loves company. And then the plot twist. The car stereo rings. On the other hand, the car's owner, Dr. Enrique Ferrari, and he's been robbed not once, not twice, but 28 times before. Ciro is his 29th visitor. Now if that isn't a stellar record in terrible luck, I don't know what is. And that, my friends, is where our story takes a whole new turn. Tune in for more. So Ciro's having a chat with Enrique, the car's owner, and he's pretty ticked off. Enrique's on the other side, smooth as a jazz record, telling him that he's named his car 4x4. And as it turns out, Enrique is not just a doctor, but a gadget-loving tech-savvy geek who has his car wired up to his phone. The ride's got more features than the latest iPhone. Our dear Ciro hears all about how the car is bulletproof, soundproof, and unmoving. It's like Fort Knox on wheels. And guess what? The windows are tinted too. Just the ticket when you're trying to see outside and get some help. Thanks, Enrique. Now there's a fuel tank, and Enrique's kind enough to point out that with a full load, it's pretty much a bomb on wheels. Nothing like a bit of life and death to spice up your afternoon, eh, Ciro? Enrique then waxes nostalgic about his innocent childhood, but Ciro's interest in bedtime stories is less than zero. Enrique then puts forward a philosophical question. What would you do if you caught your son stealing? Ciro's response is, to put it mildly, less than philosophical. He's done playing 20 questions, threatens to call the cops, and even eliminates the whole family tree. But Enrique hangs up on him faster than you can say goodbye. Then in a stroke of genius or madness, depending on your viewpoint, Enrique cranks up the AC. It starts off as a cool relief for a hot-headed Ciro, but soon enough, it's like Antarctica inside the 4x4. Ciro's efforts to shut down the cool blast are about as successful as a penguin trying to fly. The temperature plummets. Ciro's got to dress up again and even uses a piece of his jeans to bandage his bullet wound. Talk about the latest in denim fashion. He tries covering the AC vents, but it's about as effective as using a sheave to carry water. He covers himself with a rubber mat, the new 4x4 winter collection, and tries to keep warm on the back seat. Enrique rings again, probably bored, and wants to know what Ciro would do if he caught his son stealing again. He promises water for an answer. Ciro, now considering a career in philosophy after this whole ordeal, tries to satisfy Enrique's thirst for moral dilemmas, but his answer isn't enough for Enrique. And so our tale takes yet another turn, with Enrique not listening to Ciro's pleas for mercy. Our tech-savvy doc Enrique lays on the waterworks with a story about a break-in at his daughter's house. These thieves, let me tell you, were not your garden variety robbers. They took everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Right down to the toothbrush. Things took a turn for the grim, though. They held Enrique's five-year-old grandson hostage for a bit. That's when the mood turned colder than a mother-in-law's stare. Ciro, however, shows his softer side by completely ignoring Enrique's sob story and instead asking what kind of doctor would do such a thing to a person. Enrique, the tease that he is, leaves him guessing. Fast forward and a cop car pulls up. Ciro, never before so thrilled to see the popo, tries his best mime impression on the windows to get noticed. What does he get for his efforts? A ticket for excessively tinted windows. Talk about mixed signals. Soon after, it starts to rain, and Ciro's looking at it like it's a cold beer at a summer barbecue. But alas, all he can do is imagine. Enrique rings again, throwing another lifeline. Water in exchange for Ciro's full name and ID number. Enrique could definitely have a side gig as an information broker. After spilling his guts, Ciro makes his way to the back for water. And let's just say he's not picky about the color at this point. Then he notices a delivery guy bringing food to someone nearby. And Ciro's stomach joins the conversation with a growl. That could wake the dead. The next morning, Ciro's still battling the door. 
but it's like trying to open a can of beans with a rubber spoon. Ciro checks his wound, and it's got a new look. A bright yellow shade that screams, I need antibiotics. Enrique, ever the gentleman, switches on the AC to help cool him down, and drops the bombshell. He's been dealt a lousy hand in the game of life, with just a year left on the clock. Ciro then spots a guy outside chucking water like it's going out of style, but he's too weak to yell for help. As Ciro turns into a human sprinkler from dehydration, Enrique dives back into his Rolodex of times I've been robbed stories. Sadly, the party ends when Doc has to dip out for an emergency. Alone again, Ciro turns to the car manual for solace. However, finding no escape route, he decides to sample some manual cuisine. Ciro starts on Yelp, let me tell you. Now in a twist even M. Night Shyamalan couldn't foresee, our man Ciro pulls a full-on Bear grills, deciding to drink his own, yep, you guessed it. I'm sure there's a recycling joke in there somewhere, but I'll spare you the taste. Just when we think things can't get any weirder, another thief tries to crack into the SUV, and Ciro looks like a kid on Christmas morning. Good plot twist. Some vigilante citizens play superhero, beat up the wannabe thief, and get him arrested. Ciro's rescue helps dashed again. By nightfall, Enrique checks in again, but Ciro gives him the silent treatment. Ciro then considers eating his insect roommate, but he chickens out at the last moment. Guess he's not that hungry yet. Speaking of distractions, a couple nearby starts getting frisky next to the car. But Ciro does the gentlemanly thing and inverts his gaze. With nothing but time on his hands, Ciro goes all play on us. Talking philosophy with his bug buddy, he paints a somber picture of the world's wealth and balance explaining how he followed in his dad's and grandpa's footsteps to become a Robin Hood of sorts. One day, Enrique calls again, and Ciro takes the call, desperate for a lifeline. Enrique, sounding like he just won the lottery, drops a crumb of hope for Ciro. A secret stash of chocolate cookie in the car. It's not a cheeseburger, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. Ciro devours it like he's in a cookie-eating contest. The rest of the day, Ciro goes all Sherlock Holmes, setting the local residents, their habits, their possessions. Like a bored suburbanite birdwatcher, he sizes up a dog, a car, even a couple of teenagers' phones. Then he starts hammering the rear door. Eventually, with the persistence that would make a woodpecker proud, he punches a hole to freedom. He's now got a hole, not to freedom, but to the outside world. Shouting through it like a kid in a well, he tries to get someone's attention, but alas, it's a no-go. Next up, we have Enrique dialing in, and boy, does he have some news. He's taken on the role of a reverse Santa Claus, breaking into Ciro's house and finding a cool 100k in cash. And get this, he calls Ciro's wife, tells her Ciro won the lottery, and she should use the money for a fresh start. Ciro's bawling like a baby who lost his favorite pacifier, promising he's learned his lesson and hasn't killed anyone, but Doc ain't buying it. Here's where Enrique pulls out his gacha card, Ciro's rap sheet. It turns out Ciro's done some pretty bad things in his past, including pulling a gun on the Baraka boys when they weren't so keen on being robbed, and roughing up an old bus driver. Ciro being Ciro somehow blames the bus driver for not just letting him rob the passengers. Enrique lays down the truth bomb, Ciro's toast, click, end of call. Later, Ciro uses solar power, a green thief, huh? To juice up his phone and call his wife. It goes to voicemail, and in a confession straight out of a tear-jerking drama, he admits his mistakes and apologizes. With evening falling, Ciro gets to play with the car's ignition. He's not joyriding, but he does finally start it. Guess what? The SUV has a no-key, no-problem feature. Just press the ignition button a few dozen times. Buckling up, he selects reverse gear. Because surprise, it's the only gear that works. Desperate for attention, he does what any logical person would do. Pedals to the metal, into a pole. The world's worst game of reverse reverse continues. Well, 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 it seems our buddy Ciro was living in a dream sequence. He's not really escaped. He's still stuck in his four-wheeled prison, munching on imaginary gas station food. He wakes up. Enrique calls again, and Ciro does the unthinkable. Threatens to end it all. Enrique, unsurprisingly, seems about as concerned as a cat on a sunny windowsill. Driven to despair, Ciro brings the gun to his mouth, pulls the trigger, but it's a jam o -rama. Cue Enrique's laugh track. But get this, Enrique's there, in the flesh, sliding into the car like he's joining a carpool. Our thief Ciro is so apt he can't even make a run for it. Amidst some first aid and a distracting work call, professional multitasker much? Ciro finally gets his act together, shoots at Enrique, and leaps out of the SUV. He's free, and he's shooting up into the air like it's the Wild West, hoping for some help. But just when he thought he was out, Enrique pulls him back in. The cops show up, and it's a standoff. Enrique's got Ciro as a hostage, and they've got a crowd forming faster than you can say, viral TikTok. Enter retired negotiator Julio Amidio, who's been pulled off the golf course to do what he does best. Enrique spills his guts. Apparently, his daily dog poop minefield is just one of his many civic grievances. The crowd loves it. They're on hashtag Team Enrique. But Julio keeps his cool, talks Enrique into releasing Ciro, and tries to convince him to surrender. But Enrique is not going down without a bang. He hops into the car, sets a timer, and we've got ourselves a ticking bomb situation. Bada bing, bada boom. The SUV goes kaboom. Enrique is no more, and the government finally gets off its butt to address the people's problems. Now that's what I call explosive action. Moral of the story? Bada bing, bada boom.